60. And this was in the, in the sort of late 70s, early 80s. I have to apologize, they are somewhat, um, I mean, these aren't uh, totally focused, but I mean, they are historical now, I suppose. This was the route, the suspension bridge from Kirtipur. In fact, Purnara Carpenter used to walk this way to come to work in the Hanumandoka when I was there. And it's very striking that, uh, first of all, you can you notice the the major structures, the the dara, the bimsen uh, folly, as someone called it once, the Hanumandoka complex, and then you know the other side, it's still green, and you have these very wonderful routes that went their way through into the city. The one, the other one, um, now where the ring road is, all this has changed the character of what. Uh, Kathmandu was when I first uh, arrived. Coming in a little bit closer, still the Hanumandoka, standing proud, and uh, someone here, somewhere here is the uh, famous uh, Talaju temple. And Talaju, I remember, that was really one of the only uh, sort of uh, town planning decrees that were made. It was, no one should build higher than the Talaju temple. And this applied both in Kathmandu and in Patan. I don't know where that uh, rule, when it disappeared or was forgotten about, but um, when... So, uh, yeah, I think it's coming up next. Um, this is the, uh, the, the Hanumandoka complex, the main Durba Square. Um, and, I mean, even when you look at it, the area here is, uh, it's got plenty of open space, although some of it's forbidden to foreigners, I know. Um, the the Nassau Chok is a great space for gathering, even in the little Loan Chok. And then the area behind it, Basantapur, I remember it was the uh, vegetable market when I first came, and um, I've got a picture of it somewhere. Here it is. Anyone remember that? Yes. It's great fun. And um, the, you know, the, this was the only vegetable market really, um, certainly serving the center of, uh, of Kathmandu. And, um, you know, to see the transition that it's gone through now, it's still a public open space. But, I mean, if you go there now, you're tripping over antiques everywhere. And, I mean, people do try and hold rallies. I think you were telling me the other day that you established that you could borrow the space and you were hoping to spend the whole day there. And an hour and a half after there, they had set up everything, they were told, oh, it's time you move on. I mean, is this public? Who's controlling it? Who understands the need of today. And when we get to Tekutapatali, I'll tell you a story as to why we started on that project. The, I did have, uh, I was very fortunate in those days that I did manage to get up in a helicopter and we did quite an interesting tour around the valley on two, two or three occasions. And this, uh, again, looking down into uh, the Hanumandoka. The, the layout of the Hanumandoka was such that it did encompass a lot of very interesting spaces. And I, I'm told, I haven't actually confirmed it yet, I don't know whether there's anyone from the Department of Archaeology, that they're now opening up this section um, of the Hanumandoka, uh, which is the garden. These areas were actually the uh, the armory, and uh, I remember it was all totally off limits. When I first came, I was uh, I stayed in the Hotel Crystal on the top, and I always remember looking down into the Hanumandoka. And at that time, I didn't realise that I would be working there for the best part of six years. But anyway, it's uh, it the the great thing is that uh, under the 
the, uh, I think they've now got, they've established their own department. They have managed to retain and maintain the, the area around the Hanuman Doka. But getting there is a nightmare. I mean, you, you know, so I'm, I sometimes am considered a tourist and they always try and hammer me for however many rupees. But this area was all, I remember for a short while, it was all pedestrianized. Until um, people started complaining bitterly because they couldn't access their, uh, their shops and what have you. I remember at that time we did a fairly uh, interesting study and we were able to prove that you could actually feed the area. I mean, there's so many hundreds of little gullies that uh, feed into the Hanumandoka that there was no rhyme nor reason why it couldn't stay pedestrian. And, I mean, when we come on to Bhaktapur, I mean, Bhaktapur is a very good example of where they have been able to. I understand, I don't know whether it's still the same uh, mayor, but uh, he was Maoist or, or certainly communist. And he ruled the place with a rod of iron in the early days and was the first person who actually started raising money by charging uh, tourist revenue and putting it back into the structures. I mean, it was a, it was a real model example. I have to show you a picture of the Hanuman Doka because this is where I grew my little sharpened my teeth in fact. I mean this was a, a project and while I was there I, was, I always remember the inordinate number of fair festivals that used to take place from Basanta Panchami until obviously the, we had the coronation in here and this was the thing that sort of dictated as to what we were trying to do at the time. But I think it's still one of the great open spaces. And uh, I'm hoping uh, that this is an area that can be, that they, can, they should be able to allow people to spend more time in. Uh, I mean, you don't need to go to the museum <laughs> if you don't want to. I mean, one of the great joys is actually just to walk in here and to go around. I often do it. Uh, just to be in the, um, in the courtyards with these amazing buildings around. And this was the view from the top of Basantapur, where you can see they did obey the rules in those days. There isn't a single building that is higher than Talaju. Well, Talaju is off to the right. And this was really, I think, the first, the beginning of the, the failure to control, because those of you may not recognize it, but this was the, um, the first uh, Bissar Bazaar, I think it's called, the, the first supermarket. And I remember with great uh, distress looking out of my bedroom window in the Crystal Hotel to see this thing beginning to, to grow. And after that, it just, you know, I think everything just went crazy. The monument zone around, I mean, I can't really spend too much time on each of the projects, but the monument zone around um, Katman, uh, um, the Kathmandu monument zone takes in quite a lot of areas, and we'll, we'll come back and revisit the, uh, the Basantapur area. But for those uh, who've heard of Freak Street and wondered what on earth it was, this was what Freak Street was like when I first came. It was basically un unknown. But I do remember at the far end, I was standing up in, uh, in Basantabo looking down and I saw, first of all, the very first memories I had, there was this wonderful old Nawari house uh, where I used to hire my bicycle and I also realized that it was the place which had 57 different varieties of hash. And uh, it was a very, very popular spot. Um, that was torn down and I remember watching from the Hanuman Doka them cutting up the timbers. Not the, the, not the, the uh, roof timbers, but the windows and the wonderful uh, pillars. And I think that was something that actually inspired Dwarika, Didi Shrestha, to, to, to collect and come up with this amazing collection of uh, wood carvings. And uh, I used to spend quite a lot of time helping him develop master plans and what have you. 
and his, his, his desire was always to save his culture. Now there's a good crowd. This is the famous Samyak festival where the images of the Buddha, the, the masks of the Buddha parade around. It only happens once every 12 years and I've always felt, you know, my great concern is that these, there are many one, you know, once every 12 year festivals, are they going to be able to keep going? And I think that this is up to the younger generation now to absolutely ensure that they do continue. This is, I think, one of the, the most wonderful festivals that I've uh, witnessed, and I've seen maybe two. Um, but it really uses the public open spaces. I don't think any of you will guess where this is, but it's actually the road leading to Bhaktapur. And I remember stopping because this was the first time I'd actually seen the Himalayas. And I stopped, and you can see them in the distance. It's not a very good photograph. And I thought, this is just wonderful. And when I was wondering, scratching my head and saying, what am I going to talk about? You know, public open spaces, spaces. Kathmandu Valley was full of these wonderful spaces where people just roam. They never thought about it in terms of, uh, you, you know, the fact that they could wander through the fields through the paddy fields and it was one of the great joys but I mean now you have to go an extraordinary long way and what are public spaces for? They're for people in urban areas to be able to go and take a breath of fresh air. Well to get to this, to get to somewhere where you can do that now you've got to drive sort of half an hour and by the time you get there you know it's, you've lost interest. But um, this is on the way out uh, above Bhattapur, and I remember we felt that this was one of the most magical spaces. Um, it was this sort of amphitheater. Still quite a lot of it exists, but most of it has been taken over by brick factories now. But, uh, I mean, to drive up and to just, I did often used to just go and wander around in here, and I mean, of all the areas in the Kathmandu Valley, this used to be one of my favorite because you had the mountains, you were close to Bhaktapur, and it really upsets me to go and visit these areas now because it's totally changed. And I suddenly realized that I probably have one of the few people that had any photographs of them because, you know, I was around when there were very few people and I was being observant, because we're meant to be observant as architects. So, um, Bhaktapur. I just wanted to uh, explain a little bit, I'm sure you all know this, but uh, that Bhaktapur is one of, it's a very much of a linear um, zone, and therefore you have a wonderful different uh, types of experiences going from the main Durba area and then going down this narrow little road which used to be just having wonderful old houses on either side and then getting into this again, this wonderful open space Taumadito, which is where the Nyatapol is. So we're going to take a quick look at it, what it was like when I first came in. Um, and uh, one of the extraordinary things was to just stand in Bhaktapur, in the Durba Square, 